Hey, what's going on, everyone? It is David Palmer, Leo King, and Rich Lop here for The Awakening Experience. Good to be with you all. Today, we'll be talking about the Two of Swords. What's going on, Rich? What's How up, you doing, dude? bro? Doing good, man. Missed last week. I know. I guess uh, we needed a little recharge. That's actually, actually, it was good, too, because I was still, I got sick, and I was getting over it, and I still wasn't anywhere near 100%. So I remember I was thinking the night before, I'm like, okay, I got to get my vibe right for the show tomorrow. So when you, when you said that, you know, you wanted to take last Monday off, I was actually like, okay, yes, good. Cause I know I was in the same fucking place. I wasn't sick, but I was just fucking going through a lot. So I was just getting my vibe right too. So that's how it works. I mean, you could look at that about any card. I think it's about adjustment in some sort of way consciously, but these energies of this year has been mm. a nonstop hold up, readjust, go again mm -hmm. and, and, and get better. And then right when you've got that one place in your consciousness, much clearer then there's like, Oh wait, there's another fucking piece in the closet here to clean up. All right. Mm -hmm. You know? Oh yeah. But I feel like, you know, this card is one I feel genuine, generally like, I don't care what position you're in in life. I feel this collective at this moment has this cards vibration, whether it's sticking in the back of our consciousness, there is a, there is a, a big question about which direction, whether you want to go timelines to tomorrow to just, am I making the right choices in life to, there's a lot of things of, you know, where are things going? I don't know how you feel about yeah, that. Well, I mean, it, it, this, this, season that we're about to enter into with 2024 is kind of it's i mean it's a little bit scarier to me you know because i've been telling my clients for the past month or so think back to last december leading up to election year and think about where you were you know you had <clears throat> maybe some plans of where you wanted to be next right. year and you know you're always thinking about where you want the next year to go. And then 2020 rolled around and they flipped the fucking world upside down. I know. And we know they're going to do it again. It's right. not over. They're going to do it again. But, but so now those of us who are kind of in the know and we understand that something big is coming, we're in this place of, you know, being indecisive. Am I on the right path? Am I making the right decisions? Am I, you know, and, right. and wanting to overthink it. And that's a big part of the spiritual path that we talk about all the time. This right here will only get you so far trying to overthink it and analyze everything and figuring it all out. That's your worst enemy on the spiritual path. This is going to be one of those, those tests that you get put through that really test your spiritual faith. Like I tell everybody, next year is going to be crazy. And I use that word very ambiguously because it depends on what relationship you have with the universe as to whether that's going to be crazy good or crazy bad. Yeah. And, and this is one of those where we're coming up into to that place where your, your faith in the universe is being trusted because the only thing I can think is that the universe is not an idiot. Uh, there's not a grain of sand out of place in this universe. So right. I'm right where I'm supposed to be. So I'm trusting that the universe is going to carry me through whatever fucking happens, you know? Yeah, because I feel like, I love how you said we're all being tested. It's very open-ended about where we're going. I feel like the shackles are coming off, which is a good thing, but that can also be a bad thing when it's complete openness Timeline wise to spiritual wise to vibration wise to complete, I would say matrix like busting moment that you're going to have to trust. I love that she's blindfolded, right? It's like, you know, there's the moon also above her. It's like, there's, you have to trust your feelings. You have to trust your intuition. If you overthink it all and you can't see, I mean, it's kind of like driving a car in the fucking snow. You feel the road, you feel things, but if you're just going to sit and be like, well, I can't see anything, I'm not driving anymore, then you're not getting anywhere yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. And and some people, I understand, they, they like to sit on the ice and are too afraid to go, but you know that's why they make four-wheel drives. I feel like our spiritual intuition is better than a four-wheel drive even. Yeah. And I feel like we get to a place in life where we get caught up into <laughs> overthinking things or 
situations that crumble because our minds get attached, you know, to the way that systems work and whatever it might be. And so going into a new direction, we have to trust our intuition. We have to trust our feelings. I mean, we were just talking because I was just telling you, I'm like, oh yeah, you know, Aurora's four months now and now it's teething. And it's just, there's no like handbook on this shit. You you know, we we go with our gut as parents, you know? It's not like you just sit there with a fucking book. Like, so the baby's doing this now, go to page, go to the fucking back of the book, go to the index, you know, like you, you don't live life that way. Mm -hmm. But I feel like people are kind of getting that way because I feel like the, the whole way the world is right now, there was no handbook on how the world should be run. Yeah. And if anything, the people who wrote the fucking handbook that people have been using uh, did not have good intentions. So yeah. I, I think that, you know, getting caught up in their spell of their mind matrix bullshit is what they want you to do. They want you to stay blindfolded and they want you to stay sitting down and not knowing where to go. And fe- I feel like this card is an insecurity about it. She looks somewhat confident, but at the same time, she does look insecure. It's really weird. And I feel like that's how I look at pod people today. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and also too, this is another thing I've been teaching a lot of my clients here lately as we are making our way through life like every decision that you make your path splits off so the way i look at it is that before we incarnate when we're up at source planning our life we draw out a map kind of like you're planning a trip across the u.s and I've, I think I've used this analogy before. So you say, okay, I'm going to go down to earth and I'm going to play this character named Jim. <laughs> I'm going to start in LA and I'm going to end in New York, meaning I'm going to be born in 1950. I'm going to die yeah. in 2030. So in between LA and New York, here's some of the places I'm going to try to visit. You know, So you map your life out. <clears throat> As you're making your way through life, your guides are with you. And, and you're, you're being nudged as to when the path splits, your guides will be like, take this path. So most people don't realize that's what's happening, that normally they feel like they're in control. You know, I feel, you know, like I'm making this decision to make this move. And and then when I'm faced with this crossroads, I feel like I'm in control. And and it's really your guides guiding you through the whole way. But sometimes, sometimes you'll, you'll get up to like a big crossroads and the choice is yours. So your guides will back off. And then that's where people get stuck. And they're like, oh, what path do I take? And then they stop. And they're like, which path do I take? Do I take this path or this path? And, and your guides back off. And they're like, it doesn't matter. Pick a path. Right. But, but, but people just freeze and they halt. Like, I don't know which path to take. So then they come to somebody like me and they say, which path should I take? This path or this path? And I'm like, it doesn't matter. There's this path with this experience and that path with that experience. But you ain't going to go nowhere if the car's in park. You, right. have, you have to pick a path and go first and let the universe take the wheel. And so many people freeze up in fear yeah. trying to overthink it. You know? I, and, you know, it's funny that the three of swords comes after this because I feel like no matter what path you take, you're going to run into some sort of heartbreak because oh, your yeah. mind's not going to be perfect. The mm-hmm. way that you think about it, the way that you expect things to be, it's never going to end up that way. So I feel like no matter what path you choose, I feel like, you know, if we want to get into timelines or even like, it always arrives at the place that you need to be. Yeah. Of course, there's always a harder path. I feel like that path is the one where you're not trusting your intuition and your gut. You're not following your guides. You're not following any of that shit. And unfortunately, you know, things always seem to look better than they really are, especially when we convince ourselves. I always look at this card as like, all right, I'm going to convince myself that this is okay. I'm blindfolded. I love though that, you know, to me, this looks like a balsamic moon or a dark moon which is right before a new moon, because that's usually what you see right on the horizon, right before dawn, right? So to me, it kind of feels that way. It's like women have periods, right? So the lunar cycle is just the same as the menstrual cycle. And those two and a half days before the new moon is the same way of the two and a half days before a new egg, right? Their period. And yes, women have PMS, Guys, I guess, can say we have our cycles, too. I don't know what that would be. Probably either. more just frustration over this isn't working. Yeah. But I feel like it's it, it's a card and a reminder of, like, you know, it doesn't matter if something's waiting to begin 
or you're already on the path. I don't care where you're at in the cycle of start, stop, finish, you know, in the middle of a process, you still stunt yourself every time when you're like, I'm just going to fully stop and I'm not going to pay attention to my feelings or I'm just going to let my mind and my logical self figure this all out. Mm -hmm. You're just fucking yourself over. Mm -hmm. And it's really weird because even if you take something like a motor, for example, for example, and you're like, I'm going to follow by the book, I'm going to do it that way. There's an intuitive part of like, does, does this feel like it's right? Or am I going to break the bolt off right now? Yeah. Well, it says to torque it to this spec, but I'm feeling it. And I feel like I'm going to bust this fucking bolt. That trust will save you a lot. Yeah. But you know, it says this, I'm going to do this. Oops. Boop. But mm -hmm. it said this, I, I don't know how many times, cause I work on motors. It's been like, it says it's torqued to fucking 20 pounds. Sometimes I'll go to 17. Cause I can feel that. I'm like, oh, let me see what it feels like at 17. It feels yeah. all right. Mm -hmm. I never go to what it fully says. Cause I already am like, I don't know. That's me. I can trust the feeling in something, but if it does feel like that, I'm like, oh yeah, these people are doing it. Cause they, they really mean it. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't mean not use your mind. I think it's more about that concert and that orchestra of all these beautiful things and how they can come together and work for you. No matter what, it might seem like a crazy situation or a crazy choice that we have in life, but it's like, if you use that whole orchestra and tune in, huh, boom, yeah. all the pieces are there for us. That's the thing is there's an incompleteness that this card focuses on too much, which it's feeling that it doesn't understand what to do when, when the truth is you are fulfilled with everything that you need already. Mm -hmm. And it's like the, one of the most simple cards, because I feel like that ACE of swords before it is so pun puncturing through the veil. And then, Oh, you come to this. Now you're just like, oop, oop. and you know, there's water and it's listening to your emotions. That's what it's trying to say. But she's not looking at that. She's not looking at the moon. Mm -hmm. She's not looking at the, the water. She's looking at the gray in front of her. And that's always the problem. It's like, she's not trusting that intuition. She's not trusting the feelings. And that, that, that unfortunately becomes a pod person. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, where you just sit and blindfold in a pod, don't even know you're in one. <laughs> what a fucking nice feeling that would be. Yeah. That, that really <laughs> reminds me of this. Um, when I, when I was taking these courses in the mind mastery school to learn manifestation, the, the guy was telling this like story that there was this world famous chef who mm. was traveling around the world and visiting certain indigenous cultures of different places of the world and learning he was working side by side with them to learn how to make some of their most famous dishes that that you know in that culture and and he would be you know next to him okay now you add salt and now you add the pepper and, and now you, and he'd be like okay so how much salt do i need and and the person would say enough and he would <laughs> say well yeah yeah but i need to know how much exactly so i can replicate this and they would say you use enough. And, mm. and he, was, he was so stuck on trying to replicate it by the book. Right. When the whole thing is, is, is having that intuitive feeling of knowing what enough is, if that, if that makes sense, and learning how to develop that, that intuitive process of knowing when is enough, when to do just enough. Because that's, that's the back and forth dance that you have to learn how to play with the universe. When you're working towards something or you're trying to figure out how to make something happen, because so many people get stuck in and getting in their own way, trying too hard to figure things out. Yeah. When when a, a big part of the spiritual and manifestation path is knowing how and when is the right time to step away. I've done enough. Right. You know, because because you can really get in there and get in your own way and 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 make no progress, spin in circles, going nowhere. So when you're when you're working towards something, when you're trying to figure something out, your your ego fucking thinking brain is only capable of processing a tiny little fraction of the information around you. If you think about it, think about this block that we're on right now. Think about all of the information that's happening on this street. Right. Our brain couldn't process that. No. Let alone all of the information that, that, that is happening in Huntington Beach. Right. Or in fucking Southern California or in America. Right. You think... This is going to be able to figure out the information that's right. happening in the universe. You, you are, if somebody thinks they're going to figure it out, dude, stop. 
<laughs> get out of the way and let the universe do it. You ain't going to figure that out. You know, that's the best fucking example because I feel like the opposite would be the avoidance of everything because it just feels like too much. Like, you know what? The info's too much. So I'm not going to do anything. I can't figure this out. So I, I think that you played what I think a lot of us in the spiritual community go through. And then there's the other side where people are just like, you know what? This is just too much info in the world. I can't figure anything out. I'm not smart enough. I, I don't know what to do. I don't trust my intuition. I don't trust my God. I, I don't want to do anything. So I'm going to avoid this situation. I'm going to avoid making a choice. I'm going to avoid my life. I'm just going to stay in the safe lane and just figure this is what it says to do. And that's, I'm going to take the smallest bit of information and just keep on to that, which mm -hmm. is the other detriment, right? It's like you described, I think the ultimate detriment, but it can be also another detriment where it's like, you know what? There's a lot of info out there, so I'm not going to fucking take any info in at all. And I'm going to fucking just take the, the little thing like they tell me to do, do this. I'm going to do that. And that's all I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. and, and there's people who want to take that really light load of life, which unfortunately is sad because, you know, people might think of that as honorable or that's humble or something. It's like, no, if anything, no. that's making a weight as well. Both sides are. I, I feel like there's a balance in this card. And, you know, it's also weird because the only other time that you ever see like a blindfold in life today is, is, is actually injustice, right? Like the idea of blind justice, she's wearing a blindfold and she's way, she's got scales though. She doesn't have two swords, but in a sword and scales, you know, there's, 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 there's an injustice we do, whether it's the situations that you just talked about, how do you, how you can't figure everything out. I mean, that's like saying that you're going to find a fucking needle and a fucking haystack and the haystack is the whole universe, right? You're not going to fucking find it. And when you do find it, there's going to be like, oh shit, there's a whole nother fucking haystack and <laughs> another needle, right? Or there's some people who are just like, you know what? I don't even want to be by the hay. I don't even want to do anything. Yeah. This sign over here says, sit down here and be a fucking pig in the fucking... <laughs> in the corral yeah. and I'm going to just be that. Mm -hmm. And, and I feel like that avoidance to life or a situation. Cause I don't know. I don't know. I don't, I can't figure anything out. That's too much. I see that a lot too, where it's like, it's not that hard, you know, like experience in life is a lot better than not experience. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah that, that I think, I think sometimes people get confused because they they're looking for an easy route. We've talked about this a lot. Most of the time, Anytime a client comes to me and asks me, am I on the right path? They're asking that for one reason and one reason only. And that's because their path is challenging. Yeah. So they're, they're under this impression that the path is supposed to be easy. If it's not easy, I must have taken the wrong path. No, right. no, not at all. Like fucking 2023 itself is a perfect example. You know, when, when we made the transition to come here, I remember telling Leah, I said, 2023 is probably going to suck. And I don't think she really took me seriously at first. <laughs> I was like, we're about to level up. You don't level up without going through challenges. Right. So I went into it knowing this is going to be a rough year. This is going to be hard because, you know, my goal is to make a level up, to right. make it to a, to a different level. And you're going to go through challenges and obstacles and everything's going to be working against you. And it's going to seem like things are really hard. And, and that's how you know you're about to make it to the next level. So... I would argue that that if you're on a challenging path and it is hard, that's a good thing. That yeah. means something fucking amazing is coming. That's why I've been hanging on the edge of my seat for the last couple of months. Like, let's right. get 2024 here. <laughs> you know? Right. So. And it's fucking right here, like, basically right now. Although there is the weirdness of, there is still a little bit of time left. Yeah. We don't have to just sit and wait for things and feel stuck. Even though, man, I'm an astrologer, so you know we have Mercury retrograde coming tomorrow oh, yeah. with a new moon. But at the same time, it's like maybe there's retrogrades in life, or those those rethinking about things bring us so many great insights and, and nuggets to make ourselves better. Mm -hmm. It's weird though. This is a card that doesn't want to move forward or go backwards or go anywhere. It just wants to sit in full blown frozen tundra of fucking. Deer in the headlights, which you can't see under those fucking, I'll call them spiritual fucking dark reptilian fucking blindfolds that they throw on people, which in many ways is also covering the third eye. That's how I look at this one too. Mm. So people used to get upset with me because I, I wear bandanas once in a while. I used to wear them a lot, especially in 2021. I was like showing people I'm fucking rogue, <laughs> right? And... 
it, it was it was hilarious because so many people in the spiritual community are like, "You're fucking blocking your third eye." <laughs> That's going to be the dumbest shit I've ever heard. I, thank you. Because I was like about to say, I was like, you really think that your third eye, if I put my hand in front of it right now, I just blocked my third eye, right? Or I don't know. So, you know, the worst thing you can do is try and tell somebody how to parent. Somebody was trying to tell me today, like, I can't believe you have your kid watching a television with all the EMF and all the fucking shit. It's like a stimulation, like baby positive without yeah. the background, like, you know, and, and, and she's sitting like fucking 14 feet away from the TV. It's not even like, I, I'm just like, again, I'm willing to go. And Sophia's is willing to go and, and into things opposed to sit around and go, should we let the baby watch the stimulation video? Yeah. Should I not put on a fucking bandana? Will that cover my third eye? <laughs> oh my gosh. What do you, I guess, I guess if you're using toilet paper, you're gonna, how dare you use toilet paper? <laughs> it's covering your third eye with chemicals. <laughs> that's, that's, that's probably, <laughs> I would say that's probably the, the, the hardest part. Well, one of the hardest parts about parenting is that, that you will be so judged for every move you make. It don't matter what you do. When you're a parent and you got a kid, somebody is going to be judging every fucking thing you do. And from I, it, it, it first, it was weird. It was crazy. I'm like, none of these people are perfect parents. I'm like, oh, that's what it is. Oh, oh, that's how you can tell an insecure person who right. feels bad about their parenting. So they deflect by trying to judge you for what you're doing, you know. That's, I think that's one of the most annoying things about being a parent. Well, there was, it was crazy. I, and this goes with two of swords. I think it came up last night. It was, I was talking to Sophia. We were talking, I don't know. When you become a parent, you kind of talk about parenting a lot until, until I guess probably a more will be six months and then we'll probably be like, Oh, okay. In the next couple of months, it won't be as big of a topic, but it, it's funny because I got a news report of this woman who just, there was this huge news article. She's 38 and she just had a fucking mental breakdown and wrote an article for the world of like, I got conned by the world to tell me to be single and to just go for just my only dreams and not mm -hmm. build a family. And now she's 38. Yeah. Now she's single. She fucking got a divorce because she wanted to go party and go be an independent fucking woman mm. and all that shit. And she's fucking having the worst breakdown of her life and said yep. it didn't fill me up. And that feels very two of swords to me because it kind of feels like I, I don't want to go experience this road because it could go bad. Yeah. Right. So I'm going to go experience what I think is the road that will work and will give me everything that I ever want. Instead of trusting your gut and intuition. So she was married he wanted to have kids. She wanted to have kids. And then she, she went with her mind. Like, you know what? No, nope, I want to be able to achieve this. This is what I think is going to be best for me. And she even admits in the article that she didn't follow her feelings. And that's what you're seeing a lot of people on her. Jordan Peterson even has talked about recently in the last couple of years, all the studies of men and women, but mainly women. Cause they're the ones like me, I'm 39. I was able to have a kid. You know, but it's different, you know, not, and then there's 39 year old women who can, but yeah. there is something weird about the psychological state of people who miss that boat. Yeah. And it's all because of what's being pushed mentally yeah. Yeah. and, and some sort of like ideal ideology of like what you're missing out on or what, you know, and there's always something that you're missing out on and your yeah. mind is the one that's controlling you at that mm -hmm. point where my life has not stopped being a parent. Yeah, I can still go do whatever. If I can be part of my best friend's wedding this weekend with the baby there. Of course, Sophia was the one watching her. You know, yeah. yeah. I mean, but you know, it's like I don't know. It just made me really like think about. It. And then we were doing this car today. It makes me think of this. Just why, why, why are people stopping certain points of their life now based off this like? This is how I think it should be done because, instead of what they feel. Because humans are so easy to program and brainwash. <clears throat> Their plan to reduce the world's population goes much, much deeper than them simply putting a shot in your arm. 
Yeah. So they're thinking generations down the line. Yeah, they are. Th- this is all a big plan to break down the nuclear family. Have you noticed that in, in today's day and age, you know how rare it is to have a healthy family with I know. two parents and raising their kids? Like they, they've been doing this for decades and decades. They ushered in the feminist movement, you know, and, and brainwashing all the women into believing you want, you know, to do what the men are doing. And it breaks the family apart breaks the family apart then kids are being raised by single mothers and they they grow up having no idea how to how to cultivate a healthy successful relationship so you know it's just it's breaking down the family it's weakening society and over a period of the next few generations if it keeps going this way they'll just be able to steamroll over us and and you know feminizing the men and they're making the men feminine and the women masculine right so that they can come just steamroll over everybody and it's it's sad because that's where if i get this card like in a relationship reading it's like oh the person that you're thinking about might not be that idea but it could be some other idea like oh i'm a single guy i should say single because i can fuck whoever i want for as long as i want you know what i mean Mm -hmm. or whatever it might be there is some sort of mental fucking implant that has been put in to take away all the feelings all the soul and when you run off just the mind you really are not living at all as a soul human being you're not you're just living as a mind computerized implanted fucking product of a fucking system that is getting rid of everything that's natural because i feel like you know when this card was done fucking over 100 years ago you have to realize like, you know, at that time there were still those issues because there was like, you know, whether it was in the newspaper or whether it was, Ooh, this, you know, church, if I don't go do this, then I'm a bad person. So all of it is like these things, like people get caught up, like I'm about to go feel what I, what feels good to me in my life. Like, let's say, Oh, I'm going to go, go to a spiritual conference. Oh, but my mind, I remember my, great grandma told me if i go to those i'll go to the, i'll go to hell so i'm going to just sit here in indecision and lie. And this is where this card com- becomes the biggest problems to me is like you told your friend you're going to go to the spiritual conference let's say and then now you're in indecision oh yeah um yeah no no we're still going sunday yeah i'll talk to you on thursday when the person's already hesitant and then thursday rolls around and they don't answer their phone Mm. And then Friday comes around and like, you know, I'm not feeling well. And then Sunday comes and they're out doing something else with some other people, mm. doing, getting trashed at a bar. Right? So it's like they actually went and did the decision that actually is worse for them mm-hmm. but because of some higher than mighty thought process that actually blocked them from where God's the universe is trying to open the door yeah. and then it fucked the friendship up. And then now it's kind of Monday where it's like, what the fuck? Like, I thought you were sick. Oh, I needed the alcohol to make me feel better. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man, it's crazy. And, and, you know, I think a lot of that has to do also with negative thought form entities that can attach themselves to you. That's another big thing that I haven't really talked about a whole lot publicly because it's been something that i've still been working on dealing with and that's you know people throwing negative energy at you right and and if if you if you get hit with an energetic attack it creeps up under your subconscious and overtakes your conscious mind from underneath and and if you identify with it and as it it can put thoughts in your head and it can control Mm -hmm. you and and but the minute you identify this is not my energy we were talking about that that one episode the minute you say whoa this isn't my energy it leaves right because we we dealt with that a lot back in like 2019 2020 there were a lot of people throwing negative energy at me and leah there for a couple of years and then we got so good at at combating it that it it stopped happening for the longest time and it happened to me again about six months ago and it had me i don't know what it was but there was some negative energetic something that overtook me and it had me going all day and then the minute i was at the grocery store i remember the minute i stopped and went whoa this isn't my energy it left and it was like a thousand pounds lifted up off my chest yeah immediately i mean it was almost like it was almost like i I 
took a drug and it kicked in like, and then all those crazy thoughts that were running through my head were gone. And, and I don't know that. No, I was going to say, I think it feels when you're in that position, it feels almost impossible to feel better Yeah, because it feels like the whole world is coming down or the anxieties become extreme or that weird feeling or that thought process becomes like it clamps onto your brain and that it's never coming off. But Mm -hmm. when you literally are aware, like this isn't my energy, it just, yeah, that's how crazy a thought is. A thought can fucking change your whole life. Mm Mm-hmm. That's why I love the movie Inception because it was the idea of we're going to go into somebody's dream and we're going to implant a fucking thought that will change the person's life forever. But we're going to have to go all down these layers of these subconscious dreams. And then we're going to implant and we're going to find in his subconscious where his deepest fucking shit is and unlock it so he can fucking wake up and make the decision that we want him to. Mm. That's what I love about that fucking movie. And that movie to me is what the dark's doing though in the negative way. That was yeah. a movie, I guess you could say it was dark. It was a little intrusive, but it was like, it was like the most, in, I, I still think it's one of the best movies ever made because I'm like, damn, that shit is the most real. And to visualize it is fucking amazing how they did that movie. Christopher mm-hmm. Nolan's best movie. And I was like, fucking like, that's how I look at this card is people don't realize that blindfold to me is sometimes it could be ourselves. But I feel like we're dealing now with a bigger op. We're dealing with like a fucking full blown inception style going deeper into the subconscious. So all the shit over the last four years, whether it was the COVID to a lockdown, it's like been the slow roll of like, let's take you down another level and and incept some sort of fucking Mm -hmm. thought process and another level (laughs) incept a thought process. Now another level, now another level. And we we're all feeling at this point to where you just have to, like you said, just be like, this is not my fucking energy. (laughs) But it can feel like the layers are so big and you you know what? It kind of feels like a constant. Like this isn't my energy. That doesn't mean it's just forever not your energy. Like it's going to mm-hmm. come back again and yeah. you just, it's not my energy until it's fucking going to be repelled by you. Be like, okay, I've tried a million fucking times with this fucking soul. Yeah. And you know what? It didn't work. That's a light worker because you know what? That light's going to be bright fucking as fuck. There's still going to be bugs that are come by, but eventually there's going to be that light where the bugs are like, you know what? I get zapped every time I go there. I get zapped. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's why it's so important to learn to develop that, that relationship with your energy. And it, it can be hard. I had a client on a Zoom call about a week ago who was asking me about, like, how do I, how do I learn what my energy is? How do I tell the difference between, you know, what's my energy and what's something that somebody's throwing at me? Or maybe just a, a rogue fucking negative thought form that attached itself to me. How do I know? Practice. Yeah. Practice. You know? I mean, usually for me, um, uh, just like for no reason, I would find myself in a really bad mood, really bad mood. Nothing's going wrong. Everything's cool. Nothing happened. There's no, nothing's, nothing's going wrong, but man, I'll just be so pissed off wanting to kill somebody and see, it's real slippery because you know, all these forces have to obey universal law. Right. So so that's why it creeps up under from the deepest pit of your subconscious mind and slowly makes its way up around your conscious mind so clandestinely that you will identify as it. Right. And you will take it on. You give it permission. You think it's you. But the minute you stop and say, whoa, this is not my energy, an energy shift happens. I don't claim this energy. This is not my energy. It's not wanted here. It's not needed here. I'm returning this back to wherever it came from with love and light. And once you you start practicing that, and and it it gets to the point, like it took me about six months to where I can smell one coming from a mile away. You can feel it creeping up. Mm -hmm. And and me and Leah, you know, we can feel it. Like, wait a minute. Is this an energy attack? I think so. Let's send it back. Bam. And then, and then in doing that day in and day out, every single time that it happens, you start understanding what your energy is Yeah. and you, you just get that. I know what my energy is and what is not my energy. And, and in these times that we're going into with this fifth generation warfare, where the battlefield is your mind, if you're not aware of your frequency and you're not aware of your field, you're fucked. (laughs) You straight up are. I feel like that practice we've had has been the toxic relationships we've had. That's what's hard is when you're in the physical, and let's say you're in an argument with some toxic relationship you're in, 
it's not your energy anymore. Learn to walk away. It's a, like, like, and I don't care even if you're with somebody and you're in an argument, it's not worth continuing the argument. Just walk away and let shit cool down. And, and this is a, because it could be an attack psychically or it could be a toxic relationship person. And even in that situation, the more you just let that go and move on with your life, the better. But no, so many people, like an, I, uh, all the practice has been going on for a long time. We've been going through it. But you said it's the fucking, the real fucking light work, fucking dark fucking warm that's happening right now. And like, there's no more, you know, I mean, I think there's even practice in the middle of the battle, but you know, that's, that's like some upper tier practice that's left here. We're at fucking like, you have to know right now more than ever. Like, are you being implanted to be like, just, just don't do anything and just sit there and stay in it and keep getting attacked or keep staying hesitant or keep avoiding every situation or keep thinking about things to where you're overwhelmed and then you're feeling fucking overwhelmed to where that's the best way the dark stops a light worker is to get them to stop. Mm. And when you're stopped, nothing happens. Nothing manifests. Energies flow. And the, the current of energy has to, is never stops. Even if there's retrogrades, there's, the sun doesn't stop. It's not like you're ever seeing every planet retrograde. Okay? So it's like, it's very rare to go back to, and, and there's always one that's always direct. So it's like, that's the weird part is like, there's always an electrical current that's moving. The second you pop that breaker, this to me is a broken breaker in the mind. Just pop. Mm -hmm. No more lights to that fucking room. And if you start doing that in your brain, whether it's fucking your thought and reasoning, or maybe it's the way that you, your pattern understanding and the creative parts of your brain, you turn one off, the other one's going to start running more. Mm -hmm. So if, if your left brain's on just inputting the data and going, this is logical and this is good. And that's right to take it to the creative side of the brain. You're fucked because your creative side's not going to also have any judgment, you know, like back the CIA did operation gateway where they were literally looking at, and they proved that this is a holographic universe, right? Mm -hmm. And it all became unclassified. And the last page got unclassified in 2021, page 25. And actually that was the weirdest page because it was the page that proved like, okay, no matter what the hologram is and how the brain works, it's about your connection to the divine. That is, that is the ultimate. And that people don't realize that in that system, they were using biofeedback therapy and they were using, you know, transcendental meditation and they were using frequency waves to turn the left side of the brain off to let the right side of the brain go to go to other timelines and to be able to get outside of the hologram right mm. and in there the more that you actually think about it with spiritual people like it's kind of weird but dr drew just there, there was an episode this year where he actually took tyler the psychic and he fucking put a brain fucking scanner on him and he's like i've never seen a brain act like this so in the middle of him doing a psychic reading there's something about the brain waves that change in the braves brains of people who do light work spirituality mm. that that's unexplainable to science. Right. And, and really it's piercing that veil. Mm. But to me, this is the opposite. This is staying so in the veil that now you're just going wherever that electrical current of some other source wants you to go. That's not from the divine either. Yeah. It could be a controlled, you know, frequency source that wants you to go in that timeline and wants you to go in that shit. So it feels very dystopian right now out there, but that's if you choose to fucking sit there and be, and be, you know, turn my breaker off. Yeah. And okay, great. Thanks. Take you and move on with your energy because they want to, they're energy vampires out there. And I feel like, you know, an energy vampire is going to go off somebody who's stuck, not seeing anything. You can feel an energy that's coming at you positively, negatively. And so we live in a world where people think I, we, we shouldn't have any negative energy. It's like without the negative energy, you wouldn't even be able to understand what positive is. Mm -hmm. And it's good to be able to know that there is negative energy out there because you can feel it to not go towards it. Yeah. It's all about how your intuition can be like, yeah, that's bad. Mm -hmm. But I feel like too many people sit in the utopia that's in their blindfold of like, I just want it to look all like this one way, but yeah. they don't do anything. They just sit on their fucking phone and go, I'm changing the world by fucking making a comment. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, that's that's crazy. I mean, you know, I don't know. I, I can I can remember back when I was very very new on my spiritual path, and I can remember being in that place where you know most people would would want to say I'm gonna I'm gonna change the world by making this comment, but I never would do that. I can remember I'd be like. No, I'm not going to comment. I'm not going to argue with you. I'm going to, I'm just going to pull the camera out and I'm going to put my face out there. Yeah. I tell people that all the time. You know, when people show up in your inbox right. and in your comments arguing because you should be doing it this way. You should stop doing it that way. Blah, blah, blah. Like, like a couple of weeks ago, I had some lady show up in my Facebook inbox who wrote me this big, long, 10 paragraph. I didn't read it all. Because it was so fucking long, but basically, it's probably AI. <laughs> basically, <laughs> that she I mean, you know. the first couple of sentences. Basically, what I got out of it is blah blah blah. I disagree with you. So, like, I, I had to tell the lady, look, um, you know, if I just randomly bend over backwards to every stranger that shows up in my inbox not agreeing with me, I wouldn't be where I am today. I'd be where you are. So, if you have an opinion, get out of my inbox. Pull the camera out and you put your own voice out there. You're giving me all of your power by coming and arguing with me and giving me all the power, thinking that, that you're going to change my view because of the power that I have. Take your power back. If you disagree with me, that's fine. Put your own damn face out there and put a message out there. Put the, if you think that, that somebody out there is putting out the wrong message and you have the right message, Pull the camera out. You got one in your pocket. Put your voice out there and see what the universe does with it. You know? Yeah. And I, I mean, I, we've covered it before, but I think it goes really well with what you just said. Take your power back. There's people who go, oh, I'll, I'll put my voice out there, but I won't put my face. Yeah. This isn't 19 fucking 43 in the middle of World War II when you're using a fucking pirate radio to get fucking info out to the other side. Uh, every radio host shows their face. Even today. Mm-hmm. There is nobody not showing like so. There's a, like there's this great fear, which this card would do it. Like oh, I think something bad will happen if I take my power back. That's like the dark's really right. good way of twisting something. Mm -hmm. If I put myself out there, I have I have to be afraid. <laughs> well, that sounds to me like the most opposite of light work I've ever heard. You want to be an inspiration and not be afraid. That's the whole energy is to hold the vibration of fearlessness to not have fear and to let the dark hold this energy that people keep ingesting is I need to be afraid to own my power. Mm -hmm. I need to be afraid and not be able to make any decision and just sit in a conundrum. Most people's number one frustration is not what the frustration is. It's the inability to do something about the frustration. Mm -hmm. It's always what it is. In every reading, it's always like, yeah, I, I know Saturn's on your Mars. I know this is on your Mars. Or I know this is on your Saturn. Or I know this progression's happening. Or I know this, I, you know, people, people will come to me for a reading, like, and they'll, like, already want the reading done for themselves by telling me the reading. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I understand where all your placements are, but let me describe them to you if you allow me to. Yeah. And I'll always throw in a thing they didn't see or whatever. And it's like, every time it's like, you're being stuck on this. So to me, this is like one of the best cards because it is in tarot, astrology, any psychic reading or any divination work. This is the card that represents the block, the true hesitation to your spiritual self. You know, whenever the situation is, if you're in a tarot reading and somebody's coming for love or whatever, it's like, Yep. What do you, what do you, why are you even thinking still? Why are you hesitating on doing this? Whether it's the action to go towards it or to leave it or to make this about yourself or, oh, you're still stuck on, you know, overthinking about the indecision about, you know, what to do about your family or whatever, whatever the situation is, there's some, this, this gets right to that place where your back is turned to your intuition, your emotions and the true feelings of where really you need to go. And you're just denying because it's a card of denial. I am not going to face that that's too much of a tidal wave of emotion mm -hmm. that's usually what people are afraid of is the emotion mm -hmm. when if anything yeah. the mind is what to be afraid of and getting lost into i'll be honest i will drown i would love to drown in emotion any day of the week over being in the dryness of the craziness of feeling like i'm on the worst acid in the middle of the desert in a fucking empty fucking store 
Like the energy that you were just talking about like a couple minutes ago when you're fucking like, this is not my fucking energy. When mm. it's like little fucking nano robots in every little fucking part of my fucking brain fucking going. I'll take, I'll take a tidal wave of emotion any day. Hmm. As opposed to what? As opposed to that fucking mental fucking weird anxiety, oh. not hesitant, yeah, weird yeah. place. Like I will, I will be drowning in tears or laughter or I'll even take depression. I'll take whatever. Mm -hmm. Then being locked in my mind, all fucking like mm -hmm. I'm bad acid. To me, that feels like bad acid out at like what you think is a store, but it's an empty store that's been desolate for fucking like 50 years. And there's like a fucking broken UFO on the side of it and the gas station pumps are empty and there's these weird little things that are popping out under the ground trying to fucking crawl into your brain. Mm -hmm. No thanks. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, it all boils down to the same point. Trust the universe. I, I know that sound. I say that all the time. You know, and I get tired of hearing myself say it. But when you're, when you're at that place and, and you don't know what decision to make, I tell people all the time, do you want to know what you should do? The universe will show you. Start moving. You have, you have the choice of this path and this path. Pick one. Play any, meeny, miny, mo. Any, meeny, miny, mo. Okay, I'm going to take this path. So if I start going down this path and all of a sudden a roadblock comes up and I'm blocked from it, I'm like, oh, okay, well, I guess the universe doesn't want me taking that path, so I'll take this path. And, I mean, you, you have to get in the vehicle and start moving. People don't right. understand, you know, what, what's the next step I should take? It, it doesn't matter. A step. Take a step and let the universe take the wheel. But people are, again, still so locked in believing that the answer exists outside of them. That, that you know, they come to people like me wanting to know what the answer is. And my job is to try to f help you figure out where the answer really is, which is in here. And, and figuring out how to help you find that answer. Because that used to annoy me so bad when I would hear that back in the day. You have all the answers inside of you. Until I realize what it means. What it means is whatever I believe the answer is, is what the answer is. You know? Yeah, it's not like some multiple choice that is preset that you have to circle what some other entity, which is the world we're living in today that's fucking being sold to everybody. Like, multiple choice. Get the fucking vaccine. Yeah. Or put on the fucking mask. Or fucking... Take the fucking swab up your fucking nose yeah. with some fucking piece of shit, fucking weird shit, fucking going up your nose with your DNA that's being sent to fucking China. <laughs> yeah. I'll take neither. Yeah. I will X out all of those and I will write in my answer mm -hmm. because I feel like that idea of like, well, the answers are inside you. It almost reminds me of a piece of paper mm -hmm. and a pen that you're writing it out on when it's, that's even locking it into that world. Like the answers inside of you mean however it is coming to you and you're feeling and not hesitating and doing something about that feeling and not being stuck. Because I feel like the two swords are like, geez, they're crossed. And they're crossed in a way that it's like, I don't know if I should go this way or that way. But it also is a very interesting context because it's like, it's creating like a V, right? Which would be kind of like a chalice, or you could like think of it as like the Roman numeral V. So it's like a five. So it's like, it's like, it's like half of something. It's like, I'm stuck in half, you know? And, and, and I feel like people like do it all the time. They get like, they don't want to activate their full self. So it's like, people can be on the fence all the time. Like, oh yeah, I do tarot. Oh, do you? Yeah, I have a deck. That to me is like, yeah. Why aren't you a tarot reader? Like, why well, I mean, I read tarot for my friends, you know what I mean? Like, but you know, like I'm, I'm doing it. I'm doing it. No, you're not doing it. You're, you're still saying, well, because I have that job that I do, and da, 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 da. it's like, well, okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, the hesitation that you feel like you should be doing that, but you really like doing that. But you, what, what you like, you like making corn dogs better. <laughs> yeah i'm still a weeder stitchel you know yeah well actually too speaking of reading tarot this is a really bad energy when you're reading the tarot because you know everybody always they're, they're, they get in there and they start overthinking it and i tell people all the time that i'm like you know how many times i'll lay a spread out 
of, of <laughs> 10 cards and I'll sit and talk and get a download of a message. And only one card out of that whole spread spoke to me. Just one. I'll be like, okay, that, oh, the five of swords, well, I don't know what that means. Well, nine of cups, oh, none of these make sense. And then, bam, this card comes out. Oh, the devil card. That's right. the one. And I'll just take all the other cards and push them to the side and just go rolling on that one card. Or there's also been times, and this doesn't happen all the time, but it, it's not as uncommon as you would think, where I know the answer before I'm done shuffling. Right. And, 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 and I'll just lay the, the spread out for show. Right. I already know the answer. Bam, it hits me immediately. You know, that, that, that happens sometimes. So I was going to say, or there is no actual number of how many cards you have to throw. Yeah. So if you have to throw four or five or whatever the number is, or mm -hmm. just one or not one, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Whatever the answer is, whatever is, is fucking getting to it. But so many people are like, I have to fucking, you know what? There's 20 cigarettes in here. It's this much fucking p part of the tar. So I'm only going to smoke this much of the fucking cigarette. And then if I can, then I'm good. <laughs> Yeah. Like, are you fucking joking? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, it's like people are, by the way, nice smokes. We have the same fucking pack. Like, yeah. fucking, <laughs> I was just yeah. like, it's hilarious. But fucking, I, I just like, it's what a, what a fucked up life that is. I am going to just, it reminds me of like, oh, this is going to just sound so weird. But it just reminds me of just somebody who fucking is so, I, I hate to say it, but is so, in this world today is so lost in a house or a condo or a fucking trailer or wherever it doesn't matter or even a mansion and they it's like scarface he might have done a lot but that motherfucker got to a place is at that end scene where he's just so fucking snarled up on coke he doesn't know what the fuck he's doing. He's not fucking thinking. And he's so actually stuck because he's trying to get the woman who doesn't want to be with him. And he, and, he, and he fucking gets to a place where it's like, it looks like he's in love with his fucking sister. And then he fucking thinks he could just, I'm going to fucking kill everybody and I can, I'll be always on the top. It's such a crazy end scene of a movie. But I feel like people get stuck in their fucking homes. I'm going to be on Zoom all day. I'm going to replicate because this card could be like, I can replicate myself as an avatar in the real world, but not be it in the real world. That's another way to look at this card to me. It's kind of like the, I've tricked the system. I don't have to follow my true self and intuition. I could, I could be that on the outside, but not really be it. So I feel like that's what people do on social media. It's like, and, and to me, it's not the people who are putting out like content. It's the people who are just like pretending to be like a, I'm real happy right now. Although I'm in a horrible relationship, I'm a cuckold husband. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, so many people too have, have been putting on this fake persona for so long that they've ignored their true self for so long that maybe they, they really are so out of touch with it that they don't even know how to be their true self. I think that's now in today's day and age, that's probably the closest thing to like a, a, an NPC bot, you know, once, yeah. once you've ignored your true self for so long and you've put on this fake persona of a character and then you got that damn shot in your arm and then nanotechnology came and booted your soul out of your body and now you're just a, a bot. Yeah. You know, it's, it's scary, man. It's a scary fucking thing to think about that, that they can literally program humans probably to, to fucking ignore their soul for so long their soul leaves. So I, I, this is to be super controversial, but Matthew Perry died, right? And yeah. he was, he, he battled addiction and then he made his big addiction book and he became clean at the same time as he's in, I have thought that I am clean off drugs. He goes and gets boosted to the fucking nine makes t-shirts saying fucking how boosted he is. And then dies in a mysterious way, which they still won't release in his fucking hot tub the year after his book releases supposedly off drugs and all that shit yet he slam he he fucking give me give me that vein give me that pfizer it's like you went from that drug to that drug this drug 
But this one's okay because society thinks it's okay. And I've always wanted Jennifer Aniston and she's so obsessed about the fucking shot that if I go get it, maybe she'll like me finally after all these years. I'm off, I'm off taking fucking 115 Viking in a day. I'm done, I'm done uh, going to open houses and going through people's medicine cabinets. But because I went and now I'm doing this drug, maybe she'll like me. I don't know. I, I kind <laughs> of. Oh, oh shit! I'm 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 honestly the one that 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 I lean more towards. For the past couple of years, the few people that I follow in the truth community have been saying, "Here for the next couple of years, you're going to start seeing lots of famous people drop off, lots of big names, actors." politicians you know big names are going to start dropping and i i could be wrong on this but i kind of hold the belief that those are people who were arrested and taken care of that they were given a choice are you going to cooperate with us we can do this the easy way or the hard way if you cooperate with us you get to leave a legacy we'll make it look like you died of a heart attack or the vaccine or died of covid or something you know you get to you get to put a, a death out to the public that looks honorable but if you don't cooperate with us it's going to be made public that you were executed for treason right. that, that's what i lean towards could i could be wrong i could but it's just awful funny that i've been sitting here thinking man you know what some fucking famous people have been dropping off dropping off like flies and and i don't know my, my intuition kind of leans more towards that than anything else yeah but see that's the way this card should work that you're not afraid to feel that way right like no. the fact that alex jones just got freed from fucking being banned which is crazy because he hasn't been able to be on a platform since 2017 until 2018 he's stuck in a two of swords moment yeah and I think that's what's hard for people is people get kind of, I don't know, caught up in too many things where they're so worried about what's their intuition saying. Yeah. And especially like, what are people going to think? Because those two of swords could be always that whatever is opposing us kind of thing to our, our ourself. Like, well, what are people going to think? Or what will my mom think? Or what will, what, will I go, what will I be like if I actually feel that? Or if I say that? Or if I be that? It's like, that's the way to be. I'm with you on that. I feel like there's something fucking massively weird going on. Mm -hmm. the, the world that we know is not even the world at all. It is a complete fucking smoke show. Mm -hmm. A complete show. I mean, if you think about AI today now, too. I mean, like, geez. Yeah. Britney Spears to everything that their fucking hands are morphing into weird yeah, shit. Yeah. Or I, ju I just saw some crazy thing on, on, on Twitter. Uh, it was like they were trying to show some, some IDF soldier who was going into Gaza and he was defecating and he was throwing a shit around in, in Gaza. <laughs> right. But then I watched the video and the guy's AI, like his hand oh. morphs. And I'm like, how are do people believe this shit? All right. Like, why would some guy go in there when the place is rubble? There's nothing left. And go do all this crazy shit when you could see that the guy is obviously wearing a deep fake AI that's plastering on his face and his hands are morphing and his face is not fully there and his suit doesn't even look fucking real. You know, when you could tell the AI shit now. And it's crazy because people are just so quick to now they'll see something and they'll read it and they'll just see the clip for like one millisecond and automatically be like, yep, that's it. Mm. Instead of like ask their intuition, like, does that make sense? You know? Yeah. To me, it's like the common sense. This is the card of common sense. That's not being followed. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, I'm going to go fuck my ex that fucking cheated on me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> common sense to failure mm -hmm. and you wonder why that you're so victimized in yourself yeah like pretty easy like i'm gonna hesitate on finding the most amazing vibration and frequency match ever so i'm gonna go because i want to feel something else or i think i can change things my intuition's already telling me, fuck no, my guy just screaming, are you fucking dumb? And you're like, yeah, I'm fucking dumb. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I mean, you're always going to be 
put through a test to see if you're ready to level up. And I can understand that because, you know, throughout my journey of just my life, not just my spiritual path, but I should have plaques on my wall for going through toxic cycles. But at, at a certain point, at what point do you draw the line when, when you've gone back and forth with this ex for like three years like, I can see maybe attempting reconciliation once, twice, and then maybe even a third time before it's like, okay, you, you've shown me what this is going to be. I'm not playing that game no more. But I don't get the people, and they come to me all the time, who have been on and off with somebody for three, four years. Decades. Yeah, I'm like, at what point? I don't know. And, and even me being a fixed sign, of course, I don't know. I got a lot of Virgo, so I don't know. I, I'm the type that, you know, if if I identify a cycle, you know, I'm like, no, I'm not I'm not doing that. Right. I'm not playing that game. You've shown me what you're going to do every time I'm not playing that game. I don't get how people get so stuck overthinking, thinking, oh, well, I'm going to try the same thing again and expect a different result, you know? Well, it's like driving up to wherever you're meeting that ex, you already go, it might be one thing like on the phone, like, okay, well, let's go meet up. Driving to it is like not the same feeling walking up to the door or them walking up to your house or, you know, you get the, you get the hint pretty quick, mm -hmm. but I think this is a card of really good deniability that we create the opposite effect. Like, what do you mean? This is going to be great. Ha <laughs> this card kind of reminds me of like one of those psychotic laughs. Like, yeah, it's great. Fuck. Yeah. Huh. 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 And then your guides are like, okay, I guess you're going to go through with this one. Huh? You know? Oh fuck. You know? Yeah. There's so many times like in life that you just right away. know. Oh, did I just do that? You can take it back and call back and be like, you know what? No, I'm done by not showing up. I don't know why I did that. Oh, but I don't want to hurt their feelings. I don't oh, want yeah. us to get mad again. <laughs> this is where, if there's any positive to this card, it's like, cut that shit off. Yeah. You know, like cutting off the energy. This isn't my energy. <sighs> cutting the energy off. Fucking thinking of it is like fucking cutting off fucking like, no, I'm cutting this rose bush off. <laughs> you know, like mm -hmm. use this, actually use the swords to cut something off. You know what I mean? Instead of just sitting there like looking like a fucking, oh yeah, I'm looking like I'm about to do your fucking... I'm going to do all your sushi. I'm going to do all your fucking Korean barbecue. I'm going to chop everything. No, I'm just going to sit here <laughs> with everything. Uh, you're not going to do shit. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. That's sad. That's just funny that you said that because like the last two or three clients that I've had in the past couple of days is I've heard that I'm afraid to hurt their feelings. <laughs> and it's like, well, were they afraid of hurting your feelings? At what you see, especially real toxic, manipulative people like that, they have to have that control over you. This is where it goes back to your intentions. I will preach this until my face turns blue and the fucking cows come home. You have, to, <laughs> you have to be solid with your intentions. Ask yourself, am I being a selfish piece of shit? No, I'm not. That's all that matters. If it hurts their feelings, tough shit. Tough titty said to kitty. Right. I'm not I'm not playing this game again. You've shown me what's gonna happen every single time I come back. You know, what they do is they they reel you in, telling you everything that you want to hear and this, that, and then they and then they, they get you in, they get you in the boat, they unhook you, and as soon as they're comfortable, they got you back, bam, it goes right back to what it was before. Right. And after they do that two or three times, at what point does their feelings become more important than yours? Being selfish is okay sometimes. Right. It, I mean, from time to, there's a time and a place for everything. There's a time and a place where you want to be selfless, and there's a time and a place where being selfish is okay. We right. have to start, because I think that's another concept that's been pushed into the spiritual community that's keeping people down, is that I have to always be selfless. Always. No. No, a big part of the spiritual path is learning how and when it's appropriate to be selfish. You know, of course, that's probably a controversial thing to say, but but I'm not saying be service to self. Service to self means I'm of service to only myself. I don't care who I hurt. I don't care who I lie to, cheat on, fuck over, manipulate. That's not what I'm talking about. Right. I'm talking about learning how and when it's okay. Once you've fucked me over five times, 
I'm not doing this no more. If it hurts your feelings, that's tough shit. I'm not doing this no more. I'm doing this for me, you know? Yeah, and I think that's the most important thing because I feel a good example this weekend and just for the last, I don't know, let's just say since I've had a fucking kid since August. Fucking a whole new world. I have not been able to get back to certain people in my life right away. I had somebody this weekend fucking just freaked the fuck out. This dude just fucking like wished that that Sophia will cheat on me what? like with like like straight up the craziest shit and then instead of me responding with crazy shit I was just like I am not taking your energy the fact that you're using hostile negative fucking shit for what for me not getting back to this guy to look at a video I was what? like went, went to like writing paragraphs of the craziest shit and he's done it like 10 times and I've always been nice and been like hey I understand you you go through a lot of shit dude fucking I'll let bygones be bygones, but this time I'm just like, dude. Was this a friend of yours? Yeah, he's just a friend. Wanting you to look at a video? Want me to look at some video, a friend of his, like, you know, wants me to fucking, the worst, he just found me through doing this work and fucking is on high vibe and all this shit and fucking, I was just like, do you even fucking get it? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm sorry that I'm like not going to go do all this work right now. Cause I'm fucking, I don't even have the moment to. Yeah. I don't have the moment to, and it was crazy. Cause I was like, the only reason I'm writing you back is to let you know, I'm cutting this energy off. You never apologize. And I'm fucking doing this while fucking we're putting, we're, we just did a bath. Sophia's doing her moment of putting the baby down fucking to where it's not like I can be loud. So I'm going all the way downstairs to fucking, be in the corner where it's fucking cold to be able to write this to you and fucking close this door. Well, I mean, that, that right you know what there I mean? tells like you fucking that. Geez. That's somebody you shouldn't have been messing with to begin I with. I know. No, so I know that. When I mean, a person's true colors will eventually end up bubbling up to the surface. If it's like that, you're going to act like that, then that tells me that you had shady intentions from the beginning. Yep. If you're going to act like that about it, you know, like attacking you like that. I, I mean, I mean, that's, that's a, that's the person's problem though with every other person too. Yeah. So it's not like I just know it, but everybody else knows it. And that's even what he's come to me for help with. No. So it's like, but it's to the point to where he's just, that's what he does is like, I've never met somebody who just burns the bridge, but fucking destroys the whole town and the fucking city with it. And I'm like, yeah, I'm just not going to fucking deal with this shit. There's some fucked up people out there. Especially when somebody wants you to do what they want to do when you, yeah. when, 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 like, like control you. And I didn't even respond back with like negative shit. I just was like, I'm just. Is he an Aries by chance? No, he's Scorpio. Oh. But, oh. you know, it's just, fuck, man. It's just like, can't even believe that shit. Like, and I've had other people that have all said the same shit. And it's just like. I thought I was helping him by, you know, being cool with them. And I was cool with them all the time, you know, but it's happened like 10 times now. But this time, now that I have a kid and all this shit, I'm like, it's not even worth fucking that. When he says shit that he wishes or he thinks is going to happen to me and shit like that, that's fucking crazy. I would have cut that not off. Not fucking cool. I would have cut that off the first time. I don't know. I'm in a place in my life where I don't tolerate no bullshit. None. You're going you're gonna to act like that. You, you're going to talk to me like that one time, and that's it. I know. <laughs> you know? I don't know. I don't know if that's right of me or wrong of me, but you have to, you have to make that, that moral decision as to what am I going to allow in my field. And I don't know. I'm at a point. I finally, in my life, found a place where I'm happy, I'm content, things are going good. I'm real picky about the energy that I allow into my circle. Really, really, really picky. If it's shitty, shady energy, I, I don't I don't even play with it. So that's that's uh, commendable of you to put up with it ten times because <laughs> I wouldn't have done it once. You know, <clears throat> I'd have been like, nah, fuck off, dude. That's right. that's not high vibe. That's very low vibrational. You need more than an astrologer. You know, I yeah. Well, and I I I don't know. It's just it was weird because I think it's like that fool must have seen. I was with one of my best friends from seventh grade and his wedding this weekend. So not only was I in a, so when you're a groomsman, it's not like you just go to the wedding, you go to the rehearsal the day before you do the rehearsal dinner, 
Then you fucking help fucking set up the wedding and do all this shit. Then you go fucking on the, the yes on Saturday, the day of the wedding, and you go early and you all dress together and you fucking support your bu- your buddy and shit. And then you have to wait for all the pictures, and then you have to take all the pictures, and then you, you right, you're part of the whole. I mean, it's like <laughs> this fool just thinks I'm just sitting around waiting for his ass fucking to respond to his th- shit. It's fucking crazy. And I, and I know other people go through it. I've, we've all gone through it, but it's just like a good example. It happened to me this week. I was like, what the fuck? And then the shit that came out I'm like that ain't my shit or my energy right away. I was just like, nah. Yeah. And I blocked his phone number on my phone. Hmm. Cause then I, and I, I think blocking is a great thing. Like yeah. it's okay to block somebody's <laughs> fucking phone. I was like, I don't even want to go into that argument. There's no argument. Yeah. I'm not taking that shit. If you want to go down that road in your life, that's not a fucking nice road to live at all in. Period. I mean, so you know what I mean? That's some toxic shit. Yeah. So, so what? So he wanted you to look at a video. Is he trying to like put content out or what? What did he need you so badly for? I don't know. That's by the, you not getting back to him, it just destroyed his world. What was it? What? What? Uh, um. If you could, ch- if you could check this out, my buddy has been trying, and even this video production was not good enough. I seriously, seriously know you can help me on this stuff, man. I've been thinking about how this sh- uh, show for a long time, some some show, and then that that was on that was yesterday at seven fifty two p.m. and then at. 10 48 p.m simply man if you don't start showing up and helping me too i'm going to quit your network and you in general permanently and then it just goes on to some really dark shit it's a narcissist man you know what i mean that's narcissism right there <clears throat> fucking get out there and do your shit your damn self i mean you know it's fucking saying? you can't demand that somebody help you and that, that's that is another thing that i see happen a lot in the spiritual community is people demand that you help me the way i want you to help me fucking get out there and do it your damn self oh yeah and, and this guy actually sent here to the studio dick confetti one time when he was pissed at me like eight, two years ago like it was one of those gag gifts where you open it up and it fucking just dick confetti everywhere so he goes <laughs> This is where he's pissed. I mean, you literally have never spoken with me since your daughter was born, even though I was literally in the moment, which took emotional energy on my part. I was playing uh, baseball with him online when Sophia was in labor waiting. And then it was like, we got I got to go. We're going to go to the baby. You come off as a literal selfish, narcissistic prick. You literally only care about yourself and you give two shits about my life. I love knowing I sent you dick confetti mail bong, calling you out as the external validation king. Fuck you, you selfish asshole. You supported the wrong people and trusted the ones who cared about you. Your network is going to fail now because of it. And then um, I am only this way when i have been lied to i have no remorse you deserve all upcoming reflections you truly treated me as a crap friend i've never done anything negative to this guy and i am done pandering to your fake ass life with a marriage you already lost and she is totally going to cheat on you and leave you you're you're endearing it all you're going to pay for it all in the long run because your leo ego was too large and not seeing the long term Always about you, David Palmer, your biggest weakness. Still never once asked, how am I doing? Which is, I have all the, I have all my receipts of me. How are you doing? What's going on? Like, like. A weak, crippling, insecure. Like two weeks ago, me showing a fucking picture of, a, this is life. How are you doing? Oh, I love the Sprite. Oh, what's going on with you? Thanks. Happy Thanksgiving, bro. Like. No, that is narcissism. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That like I, that, that, So I wrote. I've never lied to you and I don't have a reason for doing so. I'm not going to respond to you until you fully apologize because what you have done is beyond human and compassion. Yeah. And then, I, then I blocked his number. At least you responded. If it was me, I would have just said block immediately. Ghost. No response. Like, like we, we talked about <laughs> I know, that yeah, one time. Yeah. Like my thing is I'm going to ignore you. I know. You know, because I he's know. showing you. He just told on himself what his weakness is. His weakness <laughs> is being ignored. Oh, you... I, oh, now I'm really going to ignore you. Now I'm really going to go ghost on you. Yeah, I know. Three <laughs> three hours. <laughs> three hours. Like, three hours. So, I mean, and saying that kind of shit. Yeah. Like, I didn't even say anything to him. That's the crazy part. 
It's a miserable human. Like, so, you know, I feel like this energy, it, it, it teaches you to trust your gut. Like, it's like, okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's the universe showing you. You know? Yeah. That's not somebody you needed to mess with anyway. So you, no. you obviously it's some, I, I don't know if you knew at any kind of conscious level or if the universe was just arranging your life in such a way that wouldn't even make it convenient for you to come together with somebody that toxic to begin with. But that's a perfect example. Two people who are not a frequency match because, you know, the, the, the universe would have made it in a way to where the two of you be able to come together naturally and organically. And since it didn't happen that way, then, then you know, it, the true colors emerge to the surface and that's the universe's way of showing you yeah you don't need this person in your life no but i feel like you know whatever it is it could be a person it could be any situation if it's not your energy and it's not vibing with you there if you sit in the hesitation of unsure what to do you're letting it be your energy yeah so so you gotta you know the old expression is you gotta nip it in the butt and I feel like being in that place where you're just kind of like lollygagging on things is not a good space when it's like bad, dark shit or when it's good shit. Lollygagging is, hey, you're going to miss the boat. I think to me, I deal more with missing the boat than I deal with the dark, stupid shit. I mean, actually probably the opposite because I definitely know when the boat's arrived and I jump on that shit. <laughs> I think I deal with more of like, well, I'm on the boat letting all the fucking weird, dark fucking vampire bats fucking try and fly around fucking, yeah, you're friendly. Sit on my shoulder. You're not going to bite me? Cool. <laughs> and then fucking, <laughs> fucking, you know, oh shit, I got to cut that off now. You know? Yeah. 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 It's going to keep ramping up and getting worse and worse and worse, you know? Because this energy right here, there's too many people who are not going to move out of this energy. And again, now, so we're coming up to the last wall of the hurricane energetically. Because, you know, the 2020 was the first wall of the hurricane. 2022 and 23 were the eye of the hurricane. And there, the few stragglers who are still sitting around in this energy are going to take that lower timeline. And on our timeline, we'll probably see them die. Yeah. I know that their plan was to have the population of the United States down to 95 million by 2025. <clears throat> and I saw that. And I, I, was I was briefed on that information, you know, by certain people on my journey. So, yeah, next year is absolutely going to be insane, however they choose to do it. This energy ain't going to get you nowhere if you're sitting on your ass. No. You know, you're going to get mowed over. No, and I think that's, I mean, it's, that's, that's why I feel that Alex, you know, and so I think it was really weird. Alex Jones's episode on Tucker Carlson was fucking great. It was the best one. And then it was interesting because then he got put back on Twitter and then Elon Musk did a Twitter space with him and so many fucking people. Like it was crazy. They were just calling people and having them come in in the truth community. And then one of the questions got brought up, which is, a lot of people are thinking that we're fucking agents, right? Of like, op yeah, right, right, okay. Yeah. And and actually, Alex Jones said a really good thing. He was just like, well, I mean, the, 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 this fucking dark has done a fucking great way now of like going, okay, like we got exposed. So now let's fucking start putting the energy out that fucking the people that are actually speaking the truth are fucking the bad people. Mm -hmm. And they're the, they're the ops now or cause everybody's thinking, Oh, like they're really part of this group. And then that part of it, you know, like now that's what we're seeing. Like now nobody knows who's real and who's not trust yeah. your intuition and trust who's speaking fucking truth the whole time. I, to me, it's like, have you been doing that shit the whole fucking time? Mm -hmm. Because what you see with people who are, are very inconsistent is oh, I switch teams a lot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm really fucking, you know, whatever is always the cool thing to do. That's, that's the people I don't trust. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't, I, that's where my gut's like, no, I, you sat in hesitation when the shit welcome went down, you're sitting in hesitation again until, Oh, now I can, you're an opportunist. Like to me, it's like, I don't like opportunists that are only taking opportunities to be an opportunist just for the opportunity. And they will morph into whatever that fucking is. Mm -hmm. To me, that's fucking, <clears throat> 
That's the fucking dark shit. Yeah. But I thought it was the first time that, and especially it was a fucking question to all those motherfuckers at one time. It's fucking crazy. There was like fucking 16 million people listening. It's like the, you know, like it's fucking crazy. And I was like, fuck to have that question done in the middle of it was fucking epic because I was like, you know, a lot, I think a lot of people are in that space, like which people are real, which people are not. And I think that you could tell nowadays. I mean, you could tell on camera and tell me about the way people like Britney Spears is not who, the, not who, the, or that is not Britney Spears. Yeah. Or Joe Biden, that's not Joe Biden. Like there is no, Joe Biden's not sitting down fucking doing a fucking interview that's not a controlled fucking thing or even able to be able to do a, a live talk on a phone or, or even do anything, mm -hmm. right? So it's like, to me, it's pretty easy to see who's the fake fucking weird fucking people right now because they can't fucking be real. They don't show who they are. They can't, it has to be a controlled situation. Like Vivek R Ramaswamy who's running for president was on there and he was taking a piss and they had to be like, um, uh, somebody tell Vivek to turn his fucking microphone off. <laughs> and he's in the bathroom taking a piss. And then they all start laughing. And then they go, and then he's like, sorry, guys. And they're like, do you feel better? He's like, actually, yeah, I, I do. <laughs> and the, to me, that's real. You yeah. know what I mean? It's like, that's real. Because he really didn't know. Yeah. And so it's like, that's how you, that's human to me. If I, if you can, like that, like when, when shit fucks up and shit's not perfect to me, I'm like that, that fucking real. Mm -hmm. But fuck, when it's so controlled or I feel so bad because to me, this card represents the YouTuber. That's like, I, I can't believe there's people on YouTube who do like the, they film and then they just cut every like two seconds to mm -hmm. make it perfect. Like they don't want any like weird moment. Yeah. And so the whole video is just cut, 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 to be perfect, 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 perfect. That's just like, oh my God, that would just kill me. I would just, I would have, that would be, that would be a two of swords. I would just be like, yeah, like, you know what I mean? Like, I no, oh my God, I don't like the way that my fucking eye looked. I don't like the way I said that, or I don't like the way that would be horrible. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, honestly, streaming live actually helped me get over that more than anything. This one time, about two years ago, I had to, I got this new computer chair. So I accidentally bumped and locked it <clears throat> so that it wouldn't lean back. And I didn't know that I did that. I had 1,300 people watching me live. And I went to lean back and fell on my <laughs> ass live in front of 13 people. Ka-clunk. Oops. Fuck it. Whatever. Let's get back up and just keep going, you know. And, and, and now it's just like, yeah, you can, you can tell who is, who's out there putting on a show and who's not right as in, in today's day and age authenticity is what's going to make you shine especially if you want to get in and do some light work because yeah. i know we talk about it all the time how infiltrated the spiritual community is with fakes and people ask me you know i'm thinking about starting this spiritual business you know what advice do you have and 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 the, the number one piece of advice i have is be authentic right because you know with with this vast spiritual community a huge number of them are just fake. They don't care about the awakening of the planet. They don't care about what you do with your life. They don't give a shit. They just want to be famous and popular and make money. And in order to stand out if, as a real light worker, to shine that light, authenticity is the, most, is the most powerful vibration that you can cast. Be unapologetically, authentically you. Yeah. You know? And, and if, if you're too afraid to do that, then... Yeah, because even with people, let's say I might not agree with or not like, if they're authentic, I don't, I don't care. It doesn't affect me. I'm still like, you know, I feel for the guy or I feel for the chick or I still, yeah. you're fucking real. So it, it, it actually creates a, a positive frequency because even if maybe the values aren't the same, if somebody's authentic or real, I respect them. But if somebody's fucking... Let's say I align with their values, but they're a fake motherfucker. That to me is the most toxic shit because mm -hmm. it's like, it might seem like everything's good, but if you can't be authentic, I don't give a fuck if I do not agree with you on anything. If you're an authentic motherfucker, I'm going to find a way to at least, we'll eventually come to find a common theme or a common vibe or a common value mm -hmm. and do something good. And that's what light work is. It's about realizing who's real authentically because if you don't, you're, that's the blindfold that you're not seeing that you actually see, you feel it, you hear it. Like there's, there's all the data showing that women 100% are the intuitive ones. Like the, and, and so like 
the, I forgot the guy. I'll have to find the guy. But he fucking did this whole fucking presentation just recently where he's like, my wife is always right, is what he coined it. Every time I've gone into business meetings and we've gone to the after thing and then she's met the guy, she'll tell me she's a psychic for a year in advance. That This deal's not going to go good. This guy's not going to be good. And I'm like, no, what are you talking about? This guy's great. Da, da, da. And then a year always comes by and then mm -hmm. business didn't work out. The guy was a creep. Did something. My wife was right the whole fucking time. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, why isn't this guy just fucking sensing the same thing? I guess maybe he doesn't know how to. Yeah. At least he's got his wife to be able to be like, it's been proven. She's fucking feeling there's something off. It's not right. But there he is trying to figure, no, what do you mean? It looks fucking good. It talks good. Fucking da, 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 da. And it's like, wow, you just went through a year of hell fucking with that business deal? Like, come on, bro. Yeah. I thought it was great, though, that he was honest, though, because mm -hmm. even though he might not use it the right way, but actually, I think part of the whole part of his lecture was that now he's incorporating to sense that more because mm -hmm. in guys, it's harder than women. Yeah. Like, that's the hardest thing is is, is uh, as masculine men to, to incorporate this work. Well, I mean, you know, honestly, I, I really feel like with with divine masculine energy, it, it won't be as hard. Feminine energy divine feminine energy is is typically what what we're, we're calling on whenever we say you know the women are the intuitive ones yeah the divine feminine of course but i'm i honestly feel like it's not difficult for men men it's difficult for the the men of the old 3d yeah. logical you know that that old toxic masculine of logic and order and by the book and logic yeah when you're when you're operating with nothing but your masculine logical mind yeah it's going to be very difficult to decipher your intuition but but awakening divine masculine energy is where you as a man are still in touch with your feelings and your emotions that doesn't mean you have to be a feminine whiny little bitch but you know divine masculinity is about being masculine but still in touch with your energy and that's one of the things that I'm trying to help awaken in the spiritual community is actual divine masculinity. And then once we can raise and balance divine masculine and divine feminine, the intuitive powers of the masculine and feminine, will they work at a different angle <clears throat> together. Like, my, like me and Leah. She's really intuitive when it comes to some things, and she's horrible when it comes to other things. Like, like for example, <clears throat> our, our personal situations. <clears throat> excuse me. Our personal situations, I can't intuit at all. If it's something to do with my life or somebody I care about or something close to me, I can't intuit that at all. But if I don't know or care about you, I can intuit your shit. Right. And she's the opposite. She can't intuit something that's somebody else's, but she can intuit our personal situations. Like our personal life when it comes to like a lot of the intuitive decisions that we make, that's on her because she can read that. I can't. Right. Does that make sense? So, so as you start raising and balancing divine masculine and divine feminine, they they work different. They come together like this. Yeah. Does that make sense? That makes complete sense. Yeah. I mean, I think it's interesting that this card is the feminine though. That's the one lost and not listening to her intuition because I think that's the representative of the feminine part of of who we all are is the intuitive part. Mm -hmm. Cause it's, it, it's about understanding the sense of what's happening instead of the, the matter, the physical, the mental and basing it all off that like, Oh, I'm blindfolded. So I can't see what's happening. That's mm -hmm. what's so interesting in the matrix. Neo, right? He's fucking loses his eye in the third one. And he's, he can't see and he fucking even puts on a blindfold and it's got blood. It's, it's, a, it's another sign of wake up. Right. But like that he's able to see through the matrix still, in the matrix code because he doesn't need to have his physical eyes. He can use his senses. And, and it's about how he was able to incorporate that from, if you see Neo in the first one, all the way to the fourth one, like he, it's the transition of a guy who's a fucking computer nerd. who is really smart, but he has it to get to the matrix. He has to actually like fucking feel and sense and know how to tap in. And that's what Morpheus represents is that more divine masculine understanding of it. Who has to reach out to this like fucking dude who's fucking like, kind of like how I feel like the world is right now. Like they're all stuck in their little homes on their computers, like locked in. I don't know what to do and I don't know how to access it and do all of it. That movie represents what I think a lot of people are stuck in is like, they're stuck in that fucking Neo who I'm cool. I'm badass. I get it. I'm cool. I'm a truther that I'm kind of a truther, but I really don't live it. Mm -hmm. 
and and oh when when when, when fine and, and it's weird because he gets help like oh follow the white rabbit like you know and the girl's got the white rabbit and there he is like no i got i got shit to do and then she's like really you'll have a good time and he goes and that's the only way it would happen and i feel like that's what sucks too many people get locked into this like mm, god i feel like we are in a computer world because it is like people are fucking frozen computers or just stuck in playing the same program but not actually living what they want to do like like replicating the reality as a program in a false reality mm -hmm. you know well we're we're about to be moving into a world where the people who do make it are going to be left with no choice but to find the life that they really want to live because the biggest thing that we're moving into is a change over the financial system that's the biggest thing that we're moving into. You know, the old system of debt enslavement is going bye-bye. So we're moving into a totally new world. And, and it's going to be a slow transition. But long story short, within the next 10, 20 years, the whole system of career and finance is not going to be what it is today. You know, like the whole system of wake up and make yourself go do something you don't want to do just so you can get a little bit of money and barely survive. That's the system that's going bye-bye. So... If you can imagine 10, 15, 20 years from now, when that system has gone bye-bye and all of the other jobs are taken over by robots, you know, cashiers, fucking burger flippers at McDonald's, those would be robots in the next They already years. have a McDonald's that's that way. Oh, yeah? That's, that's going to be everything in the next in the next 10 years. Probably, probably ain't even going to take 10 no. years. But definitely 10 years from today, you walk into a Wendy's, there's going to be a robot flipping the burgers. Factories... Dude, they got robots that can do the fucking Macarena and do a backflip and shoot a target with a gun. They can do any of these jobs out here. You know, that's, that's going to be all... So, so what are you going to do when, when all of your basic needs are met? What, what are you going to do with your time? Most humans who make it there are going to have to find what fucking lights their soul on fire, what, what their true calling is, what their passion is. And, and just getting them through this... This next couple of years is going to be a real pain in the ass getting people out of their mind and out of thinking, you know? And well, yeah, because I feel like if you think of like AI, if it's able to fucking do the tasks that we had to do in school and shit, right? Like it'll make a report. It'll make a fucking, it'll like look at your website and make a good bio. It'll, it'll do all the things we have to evolve as humans because if, if, if it's at that point, we have to be keep, we have to keep the edge. So I don't think that AI is scary. What AI is scary about is fucking that humans are becoming lazy mm -hmm. and not wanting to keep evolving, right? Like they don't want to keep moving forward. They just want to keep fucking like staying right here and letting this little fucking computer fucking AI quantum fucking computing uh, start figuring out, oh, like, oh my God, it's figuring out how to do math on its own. Well, that's what humans know how to do. Fucking pretty fucking amazing to where we're, look where we're at today. I, we're at a place to where it's like people are just not wanting to keep evolving and see how awesome the frequencies can keep raising mm -hmm. and are in deniability now that humans have run their course. Right, like, and, and, and the feeling that they've run their course and that's a deniability to evolve. Like, no, we're done. We're done. We're done. We're done. I'm not going to be able to do anymore. I can't figure this out. Da, 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 da. And that's all the problem is like too afraid to evolve yourself, which you got to hold yourself at, the, at a higher bar instead of being the blindfolded one that I'm only as good as this. And we have our bad days. We have our days where we don't feel like we can do shit and that's okay. It's about what you do when you realize, shit, I'm caught up in this right now. Let me get the fuck out of this. To me, this is a card of like a temporary block. But man, unfortunately, it's also a card of a collective block that individually and collectively can run for an infinite amount of time as long as people get stuck in that place. Mm -hmm. You know? Yep. Yep. Man, I'm, lo I'm looking forward to fucking the next five, 10 years. I don't care about you know, everything else. I'm looking forward to us really awakening our actual power powers. Fucking telepathic communication, telekinesis and shit, you know? I know. And it's, it's, we're heading into a fucking badass world. It's going to be a mess getting there. Here, here in the now, in the next two or three years, it's probably going to be messy and fucking scary. But yeah, once, once all the old matrix enslavement programs are gone, 
<clears throat> and uh, the fucking, it's not just going to be the financial system. In the next five to 10 years, everything that you and I have ever known about being a human on planet Earth is going to be different, especially the medical, big pharma, fucking yeah. food and drug administration. That's all going bye-bye, you know, and, and quantum healing, fucking right. frequency, quantum healing is going to be me the medicine of the future. Energy healing, yeah. you know, and, and that's going to be fucking badass. Well, and especially when you go to Wendy's, like they're going to turn the robot into bringing like Dave, ta Dave back from Wendy's and he's going to be like, there <laughs> as a robot and they're gonna have a bunch of wendy's with red hair and when you go to the drive through you'll take your fucking ketchup packets and throw it at them and laugh <laughs> and they won't know what to do <laughs> ketchup all over wendy's fucking robotic face <laughs> but most people will probably be like oh my god you know like that'll be a creepy world like at mcdonald's are gonna bring back the hamburger <laughs> It's going to be a little bit trippy, but yeah. it's about what you do with it and have a good time with it and not fucking let it freak you out. Like, I feel like people are, at the, at the, at the end of the day, I just feel like it's weird because, like, in California, if we're going to talk about the fast food thing, I thought this is weird, right? They passed that fast food bill. It's like $25 is the minimum wage for fast food workers. Yeah. But then all the fast food joints are like, we can't afford yeah. that. I feel like it was all set up to bring in because they already made a McDonald's that's fully no human operational. And it's like that that's also a way for them to just bring in the robots, right? Like the people are like, Oh, I'm going to get paid more. It's like, what do you mean? They're, they're just doing that. Just a mm -hmm. another good way to bring in the robots that that'll work for like the little, like that's a band aid for you for a minute. And then, mm -hmm. and, and so many jobs are all the malls that are like all empty, but they keep the, 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 the infrastructure up. Mm -hmm. and I saw an article about why it's like, yeah, they're going to turn those into facilities of building robots to being there for FEMA to use as like emergency f facilities and stuff. Those big malls that just keep going out of business and more stores or ones that have like two or three stores left, but most of them are gone. I was like, Oh my God, mm -hmm. the government will pay for them to go in there and use the mall for other things. I was like, Uh, so if you don't want to go in that fucking world because I feel like anybody who gets caught up in that shit is like I'm just going to sit here and not see my power and not do anything and not raise my frequency and keep following all the fucking shit that I think I should be doing because they're telling me what I think I should be doing and I'm just going to just I'm not going to listen to my intuition I'm going to listen to what the fucking fact checkers say <laughs> Which funny is there's no fact checker. Fucking AI. So no, there is no fact checker. So that was another part of the debate on, on X, which it's like, I, and I, and I think it is at the moment, the best way it's like, if something is false, that's why he does community notes. So it's like the community can say, is this false? Is this not? Well, here, let me find a fact myself as a community member and put that up for other people to make the choice their own. If they want to believe in it, they can. If they don't, they don't. But at least here's, here's my proof that this is not real. And 15 other people say that. And, but no, 40,000 people say that's not. So if, if we would have had that, it's so weird to me that that shit came out after the last three years of bullshit, yeah. right? Because it's like, if that would have been there, for somebody for the COVID shot in December, 2020 and all the way through 2021. And you would have been putting up all the real shit as a community note. I guarantee you the numbers of people that would have put that up and agreed opposed to the mm -hmm. bullshit that the FDA and the CDC were saying, people would have had a whole different yeah. thing. But the idea of the fact checker was that they thought that there was a room full of people fact checking. There was no room of people. It was AI. It was just fucking AI. Just fucking finding a fucking website to be like, no, this is, and it was finding the exact same thing that was being said mm -hmm. everywhere and just saying no fact check this is what it says and it was just looking at one or two or three sources and that's it it's fucking crazy do you, do you remember when we did the event out there and i was saying that my intuition is telling me that what we're going into for 2024 is going to be something similar and craziness to 2020 but there won't be nearly the censorship right thinking that that if you could imagine a remake of 2020, but 
you have access to all the information. Right. And I, I and so far with the way X is going, I'm kind of feeling like my intuition has proven to be right. I'm thinking that they're going to start pulling some crazy shit, but there's going to be little to no censorship. Yeah, it's like natural born killers when fucking Mickey and Mallory are in the fucking jail and fucking the whole jail fucking fucking breaks open and never you're not behind bars anymore, but it's fucking crazy up in this motherfucker. You know what I mean? Like I love that movie fucking and you know, like Mickey and Mallory knocks and then fucking he loses his mind. I love that movie. But fucking that's what it's gonna feel like. It's like, yeah, the jails, all the doors are open. But everybody's out of the jail. Some people want to stay in. Some people want to break mm -hmm. out. Some people want to fucking cause ruckus in the jail. Some people want to take over the jail. Some people want to fucking light yeah. the jail on fire. The fucking security guards are going to be running for their fucking lives. Mm -hmm. Like, and this is going to be the, you know, this is going to be the final fucking final, final countdown. The, <laughs> the, final <laughs> test. the final test, because, you know, we had 2020 now 2024 we're going to do it again, but we're going to put all the information. Anybody will have access to any information that they want. So now it's natural selection. If you're, yeah. if there's all the information that anybody can, can get access to all the information. So if you're stupid enough to still be brainwashed with access to the truth, you wouldn't make it to the new world anyway. So I think, I think they're going to set it up that way so that it's kind of like natural selection. And that's how that's how you choose which timeline you're going to take, you know? Yeah, I feel like it also will bring back something, you know, it's technically illegal in America is pirate radio, right? You're not allowed to like get on the radio waves without having a fucking license to the FCC. Like at at, at jet ski races though, I have an FM AM transmitter where, you know, you can put out your own radio waves, but technically that's illegal. But I feel like it's pirate radio where where where, you know, everything's going to be so open and people are going to be transmitting and broadcasting in all these new ways. And even what we call the internet now, I feel like there's another internet that's being born. Oh, there is. And, 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 and that goes from everything from like web three to DeFi to all this shit. But like, there's going to be some other place that people are going to be doing commerce exchange mm -hmm. uh, information. And so we have to remember that one timeline, the dystopian thing is happening, but there's a timeline that's happening. That's happening right now where, what do you mean? There's bypass of all that timeline. Like, Oh, you can't use the postal service because it ain't working. Well, there'll be about 15 other different private sector shit to ship something with probably even quicker than UPS or whatever. It could be, you know, all these things are possible in new ways. And I think if people can be more open to that instead of being in the hesitation of, I don't know what I'm going to do. It's like, we'll know in the moment and we'll know what works and what doesn't work. Yeah. And it'll be figured out fucking great. Nice. So it was, a, it was a fucking great episode, man. Mm -hmm. Yep. 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 And, you know, we're going to finish the year out with doing cards. But at the beginning of the year, the awakening experience is going to a whole new way of doing it. We're super stoked. We'll be releasing that more. And then we'll be out, of course, in Texas in April. Yeah. So we'll put the link underneath on this video. I'm finishing a, a page for it, but there is a page now. If you go to teamlight.com and go to the store, we'll be out in Texas mm -hmm. in Austin for the eclipse. Rich and I will have the awakening experience there. We'll be there with team light and a bunch of other people. And then we're speaking and the eclipse is going down and you can get tickets right now. Go to teamlight.com and go to the store. That's and we'll be about. working with Rion and everyone at team light and a bunch of other people. It's going to be light worker fucking be bad going down yeah looking full blown forward, looking forward to that it's gonna be awesome. i know it's gonna be dope yeah. like we're fucking stoked we're we're stoked i mean and we're gonna be right there fucking with the eclipse right where it x's mm -hmm. and that's when i feel the world's gonna be popping and that's why we're gonna be there so if you want to be with us in texas at the moment and setting that fucking high frequency and we have a lot of stuff we're working on to bring there we're bringing so much. We're bringing this set. We're bringing shit. We're bringing the cameras, but we're also going to be bringing, I'm sure you're bringing quantum healing stuff and mm -hmm. a bunch of cool shit with, yep. with Leah and Sophia and I, we're all working on shit to bring together and it's fucking dope. So just go to teamlight.com. Yes, sir. And yeah. So anyway, 
through this retrograde, the last three weeks here, three more shows of this, and by the new year, a new awakening experience upgrade is coming. So super stoked. Much love to all of you. Make sure you follow Rich's channel. Also make sure you're on highvibe.tv, and we'll see you on the next one. Adios. Peace.